sometimes no matter how good a job you do you can't please everybody so just make sure that you're doing the best job you can and you have a complete commitment to that and the rest doesn't matter Welcome to Monday Mornings with Michelle, the new business podcast. Whether you're kicking off your day or kickstarting your business, Michelle is going to kick your ass into next week with the essential fours. Strategy, systems, support, and state of mind. Now, welcome to center stage, Michelle Nedelec. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I have my most amazing guest, Gavin. Gavin Scott, thank you so much for being here today with us. That's your cue. <laughs> We're going to have some. <laughs> you see, guys, how planned this all is. We're, We're totally, totally planned. planned. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Um, hopefully... Oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to gift your audience a lot of value around business. So let's go. What are your first questions? Or Rock and roll. Well, give everybody a kind of the 5,000 foot view of who you are and what you'd love to do. Million dollar question. <laughs> uh, I can stump you on uh, the first one. Okay. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Scott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're on the roll. Um, <laughs> and where are we sneaking in on you from? Where on the planet are you right now? Born in London. I'm currently living in the south of Spain. Um, I was in real estate for 25 years, had my own company, which I started with zero and took it to a $90 million turnover company. Um, nice. And then some stuff went uh, went wrong or uh, went sideways or didn't go how I expected it to go. And so I took a sabbatical and I actually didn't find myself on my sabbatical, which was quite interesting. Um, you find? But I, I, I did some traveling around Southeast Asia and uh, did a yoga teacher training course in Costa Rica. And then I was spent three years in Malaysia selling real estate uh, to the Asia Pacific investment market. And then COVID hit and everything changed. So uh, I was trying to force things to work on the outside. And I thought, well, this isn't working. We better go inside. And so that's really when I had this spiritual awakening and started to learn basically about mindset and manifestation and the law of attraction and patterns and habits and behaviors and all these weird things. So I've, I'm now uh, an impact leader. I'm trying to make an impact globally and I help people also do it personally. So I'm a mentor, coach, motivational speaker, and also a podcast host. Nice. So you seem to be a pretty darn good manifester having a $900 million <laughs> portfolio. That's rather outstanding, I must say. So what made you decide that that, that was the thing to, um, to hone in on? Because clearly you know how to do it. Yeah, why, I mean, why make it a, uh, like, why the, uh, I want to say force study, but that's not really what I mean. But like, why was that the focus? Well, back then, I said, I'm going to work my 30s and live my 40s. And what happened is exactly that. I'm living my 40s. Uh, you know, I grew the business over nine years. And my investors decided to act immorally and unethically, uh, but not illegally. And so after having made them a huge amount of money, they decided to take my money that I had made for themselves. And in doing so, made me bankrupt. Sure. So How rude. You, you, you know, it's all my friends at that time, getting married, having kids. You know, this was my baby. This was my family. This was my house. And someone came into my house and destroyed my house and my family. So it was really traumatic is the only way really to say yeah. it. 
Um, it wasn't a, a really friendly experience, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And mm -hmm. um, everything happens for a reason. Uh, you know, karma's a bitch. They're going to get it in the next life. No, no question about that. If there's gates of hell, then they're going to burn as they go through them. Uh, you're, you're not still bitter about this at all, I can tell. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Dude, I, I would totally believe, be better. <laughs> I just believe in uh, no karma. No judgment whatsoever. I just believe in karma. Awesome. Uh, awesome, awesome. So tell me more about what you do and how you work with people. Like, what's going on with that? So basically... It all started out, I, I moved to Spain during the pandemic and um, I, I was doing all this internal work. I'd gone to Tony Robbins event and I'd been to webinars and seminars and had mentors and coaches of my own and read books and whatever I could get, I was consuming, you know. I was obsessed by it and dedicated to learn basically um it just was completely eye-opening you know like what i saw was like wow you know it was mm -hmm. one of those moments and i just wanted more basically um so anyway i was walking down the beach one day in lockdown here and i saw a light uh in the sea and i was like that's pretty strange uh and i was like i wonder where that is and anyway it turned out to be morocco and uh, I thought, well, if you can see it, you must be able to swim there. Don't ask me why I asked that question. But uh, anyway, suffice to say, Google showed me that you could swim there. It's a 16 and a half kilometer open water marathon known as the Gibraltar Straits Challenge. So I thought, right, let's get comfortable with being uncomfortable because, you know, Living in your comfort zone basically means you're not going to grow. You're not going to be able to, you know, enhance your life. You're not going to be able to make an impact. And one of the reasons I left real estate was I did a litmus test, right? And the litmus test was, can I change the world so greatly that it's never the same again? And the answer was no. So... You know, by changing lives, by impacting our environment, I believe that I'll be successful with that sort of mission statement. So, cut a long story short, if you're going to do something that's an endurance race and you're not used to it, you better have a why, otherwise you will fail. So, I've always had, like, injuries because I always put myself in these kind of sporting positions and whatever else. It's always too two steps advancing forwards and five steps backwards in terms of like, you know, physical progress and rehabilitation and stuff. So I thought, all right, well, let's do it for a personal reason of getting rid of my limited beliefs around my physical capability. Then I thought, well, you better have another reason that's bigger than yourself. And uh, basically I realized that I've traveled this world so much extensively that I've seen the most beautiful places on this earth and I've been back to them. And they are no longer as beautiful as they once were. And the reason is there's too much pollution and plastic waste. So I thought, right, let's raise awareness around this, uh, this plastic issue, basically. You know, it's one thing to actually see it. It's another thing to intoxicate ourselves by digesting, you know. So mm -hmm. people don't really understand that microplastics is in our food system already. There's probably, I don't know, four big spoonfuls of microplastics in each human at the moment. That's how much we're consuming. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it, it's bonkers. Um, so that, that was my why. And I was like, okay, well, we've got to raise awareness and we've got to try and create a solution. And I was like, well, education, it's the only way, you know? And then I thought, well, I was never good at school. I never paid attention. <laughs> what makes it mean that everyone else is going to learn? And then I thought, well, it's still got to be educatory, right? So how do you do it 
in an educatory manner, but get people to actually pay attention and enjoy the process. And I basically came up with this idea of leadership, <clears throat> leading by example and being an inspiration to others. And so that was the Gibraltar Straits Challenge, which I was meant to swim this year in June. But unfortunately, due to registration errors, uh, has been put back three years. Oh. And this, <clears throat> this was a discovery made in the last 10 days. Oh. And uh, I spoke to my coach and he's like, well, I can understand your frustration, but the Turkish team I've been training, they can't make their slot in September. Do you want it? And I was like, slot for what? And he was like, the English channel. And I was like, uh, 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 I'm not sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> that one's a lot colder. <laughs> a lot colder. It's a lot longer as well. Right? You know, like the Gibraltar Straits is a five-hour swim, roughly. The English Channel is 15 hours. Wow. So, uh, so anyway, I took a couple of days to think about it, and I just thought, you know, if I shy away from challenge, if I shy away from discomfort, if I shy away from the fact that I believe if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. If I shy away from that, then I'm not who I am trying to inspire others. So I agreed to do it. And um, I've been swimming an hour maintenance for the last like nine months, waiting to get a date so I could build up my endurance. And only a few days ago, I swam six hours to, uh, to do the qualifier. You've got to do a six hour qualifier for the English Channel. So, uh, so it's been a pretty hectic couple of days and um, I've just come out of the sea actually after a swim this afternoon. And yeah, there's a lot of swimming going on in my life right now. That is awesome. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah, Slightly well, insane, it, but fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know, it's it's funny. I'm I, I made a post about this the other day. Like, what's more value to you and gets better results? Being your biggest critic or being your own super fan? Nice. And so I'm often my biggest critic. Like to me. Until I get this mission complete, there is no joy in success. Whereas the truth is, I've just gone from one to six hours in like the space of 48 hours. And it's <laughs> practically impossible. And I've done it and it's a big hurdle. And so there should be celebration. There should be an elevation of gratitude. Absolutely. Be, you know, uh, acknowledgement and appreciation and uh, all those things. But I'm trying. I'm trying to be my super fan. I am. I just, I won't rest until it's done. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so are you also running a coaching business as you're, yeah, as so, you're training for this? That's Because that's a lot of time. That's a big a time, time commitment. So just so you realize the time, obviously I've been doing an hour maintenance. I did an hour in a swimming pool this morning, just on technical stuff. And then I just swam about an hour and a half this evening in the sea. Wow. And obviously we're going to start increasing that. So yeah, there's a lot of swimming. And when you swim long distances, you do get out and become tired. So you know, it's, it, it, <laughs> it's not so effective, really. Um, yeah, I lose hours. You're right, I do. But people don't understand the reality. No, that's, the, that's a bad phrase. People do not understand or no, people do not comprehend the definition of commitment. So what is a commitment to you? It's been so all in, it's, it's a done deal. So you're gonna be somewhere, it's so turn up, right? Like, yep. no, that's not a commitment. That's agreeing to make a plan and, you know, have a social life or a business meeting or something. A commitment is something so divine 
that if you were not to follow through with it, your internal alignment and truth would be off. In other words, you would become a version of yourself that just isn't representative of you. And then you sort of move into the territory of integrity. I always used to think that integrity was what others thought of you, but actually integrity is all to do with your commitment to self and, you know, living by your own commandments, your 10 commandments or however many commandments you got. So, um, so yeah, people just tend to express things or use words or go over words with meaning without any real regard because that's what they were taught. That's what they know. Whereas when you start to actually do the forensics on a word, you actually truly begin to understand the meaning. So I have a commitment. I have made a commitment to raise awareness about plastic pollution and swim across that ocean. So that's my commitment. You know, if you ever look at the... Uh, the iceberg theory, right? Mm -hmm. The tip of the iceberg is just out of water. And that's me swimming across the ocean and raising awareness. And below it is the mass of the iceberg. And that is the hours and hours and hours of commitment that I put in before the actual swim that no one sees. So, yeah, I have... Um, Reduced my one-to-ones, uh, not vastly because I charge a substantial amount of money and there's not many people that want to have, I would say, weekly calls. Like quite a lot of my, my clients just take monthly calls. Um, I prefer the weekly calls because I'm all about impact. So... <sighs> People like to use this word transformation. What does transformation really mean? It means basically that there is a change in a mass, whatever that mass is, let's call it a human. So let's say in this instance, as an example, you're grossly overweight and obese and your transformation is to become slim, right? That's transformation. Now, this is what I do. I create impact. Now, in the scenario of a grossly obese person becoming slim, what is the impact? The life the impact, health their health time. The impact is the improvement in their health, the improvement in their neuro pathways where they've become more confident they've become more caring they've become more giving everybody around them begins to notice that they have a different way about them that's impact it's the 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 wave theory the tidal wave you know like it's just continuous impact the wave just keeps coming and that's what impact is all about for me so if people want that kind of impact in their life, then that's what I help them with. Nice. I love it. So, um, <laughs> so many points I could take this, but I'm going to go with, um, I don't, I'm, so you got me gobsmacked, which is awesome. <laughs> so you don't usually don't get gobsmacked. I'm like, who do you serve? Who do you support? How do you? And I'm like, you are already, <laughs> you've taken it to a whole new level. And it's like, I assume that everybody who's enamored with you at this point is like, hey, how do we get a hold of you? Because really, that's kind of, if you can go and swim the English channel, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you understand what it takes to be able to make shit happen. And, and we love and adore that. So for those who are just totally enamored and going, oh my God, Gavin, I need you so badly right now. Where do people start their journey with you? Um, at the beginning, with an open mind. Uh, stayoutstanding.com. You can find me at the website. We've got a Stay Outstanding podcast. If you look for 
Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube channel, and we've got a Facebook group, Stay Outstanding Tribe. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it won't be hard. Just put Gavin Scott, Impact Leader. There's done. We'll have all your links in the notes. Absolutely. Just wondering if there's anywhere, you know, a little something, something that you had for people uh, that we could talk about and go, hey, go get this. Well, here's what I'll do. If you email me and you put Michelle Nedelec as the subject and you write that you were listening to this podcast episode, then I will give you a special... Something, something. <laughs> something. Yeah, I was going to say discount, but you know what? I just... Yeah, we don't I, need I, discounts I don't or anything. Just a little something. No, love and affection no, works. <laughs> I don't want to give discounts because it's, it's not a real thing. But let's put it this way. I will make sure to enhance your mind and your life beyond what I would have done anyway. So you, in other words, you've got my commitment. Nice. I love that. Awesome. So I have to ask you, Gavin, at what point in life did you know that you were especially kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? I mean, probably about six, five, six, seven. Um, you know, I watched movies such as um, Michael J. Fox, The Secret of My Success, where he went to, from Kansas, from the farm, and he went to the big city and took over his uncle's company and flew home in a private jet, you know. So I used to have dreams when I was a kid. And then when I was about eight or nine, I started doing car boot sales. Um, you know, my parents would be like, leave us alone. Like, we're not going to do that this weekend. And I was like, we have to, we have to, you know, I drive them mad until they took me. Um, then I started doing car washing. And by the time I was 14, I was doing Sunday markets where I was selling software. So we used to have uh, CD-ROMs, thing of the past. And there were things like SimCity and Mavis Beacon teaches typing and those kind of things. And I'd be there and I'd be like, 10 pounds for a program or software or three for 20. Come and get it. Roll up, roll up, you know. And uh, really, that was probably the greatest experience of my business career because what it meant was I learned to communicate with somebody that was interested in something that I had to offer. Now you can call it a buy-sell relationship, whatever, uh, a, a product review, however you wanna phrase it. But for all intents and purposes, they were interested in something that I had to offer. So I learned a lot around communication very early, around negotiation. Um, and that really like led me into my path. I mean. I used to buy domain names and sell them when I was like 16. Uh, I made websites. In fact, if you speak to some of my best friends, they will tell you that I created Google before Google started. Uh, I just was at university at the time, probably, uh, you know, enjoying too much of the university lifestyle and having chose the wrong partners to be my business partners, AKA my, my, university friends who were also you know enjoying the university uh environment uh i didn't actually then go on and create google but you know for all intensive purposes i've known since since i was a little kid i did this uh this thesis at the end of my first year in uh, business school university and uh, the title was, is an entrepreneur born or made? In other words, can you educate somebody to become an entrepreneur? And I went so hard left, so hard that an entrepreneur is born. It's not possible to make or mold 
an entrepreneur that they pretty much failed me um, because at university they want you to give both sides of the argument but I didn't see both sides so I told my truth and they didn't like that but I still believe that today you know so many people are like I got sacked from my job I didn't know what I was going to do to pay the check so I had this idea and I started a business and Yes, okay, if you want to call yourself an entrepreneur, fine, but in my world, that's not a real entrepreneur. Like, a real entrepreneur is somebody that knows from a young age that they are destined to run a business that is going to be very successful and keep a lot of people employed and, you know, help the economy and be a part of the business community. Very cool. So <laughs> give me an example of, you can give us tons of stories and they're awesome, but give us an example of um, a screw up that you did in business that was funny. So we've had a few fall in the face episodes and most people hate going through them, but sometimes some of them are classic and you're like, oh my God, that was funny. Yeah, some of those were. Sure. How many do you want? <laughs> um, here's one that comes to mind. Uh, my first real estate job out of out of university, out of university, working for a small local commercial estate agent in central London. Boss is like, you know so frustrated we can't rent this office it's like a small office for like three four people you know like 500 square feet 50 square meters roughly the client i've known him forever like he's gonna end up taking his business somewhere else like i just don't understand and i was like all right i got this and so i looked at how he'd been advertising and it was like you know little thing in the paper or little thing on some directory, whatever it was. And I was like, boss, we need to up our marketing game. So we took a half a page, which was obviously a way bigger than a couple of lines. And I created this graphics. Now the view of this office was overlooking St. Paul's. So it had a beautiful view. So the graphic was somebody sitting at their desk with an incredible view out the window, looking at St. Paul's. And the person at the desk became this very well-dressed, voluptuous lady. And the advert said, if you had a view like this, would you rent this office? And boom. The phones just started calling. Hello, can I help? Oh, you're interested in that? Okay, one second. Oh, you want that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Ding, ding, ding. And within like two weeks, we had the thing rented and the boss was like, whatever you did, do more of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but the bit where it gets a bit, uh, where you say I kind of fell over myself, shall we say. A few weeks after we rented it, I had an angry lady call me. I don't know who you think you are. You can't be so chauvinistic. You can't be so against feminism. It's not your place. It's not your right, blah, blah, blah. And she just, you know, whatever she could throw at me, she was throwing at me. And uh, I accepted all of her points as valid, of course. But it wasn't done with that intention. And, you know, she was really dressing me down. And there was no way that I was going to explain that my intention oh. wasn't that way. And so I had to put it's my It's not like you got the girl with the rental. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you didn't even get a blah blah. Had with you. <laughs> it been another conversation. <laughs> I, uh, so I put my tail between my legs and I just apologized. Aww. And uh, it was really funny. Boss came back to me a few weeks later. He's like, Gavin, 
never do that again. <laughs> I was like, like what? Like you told me that we should do it. Like I'm in the process of doing like the same thing for something else. Like you know, not using a lady, but you know, creating something. Mm -hmm. And what had happened is the owner of the property that we were working for had showed the advert to his wife and his wife was completely unimpressed and wanted to know who was responsible for this. And so, of course, she called me up and that was the person on the phone that gave me the dressing down. Aww. Uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Irony. Irony. Yeah, like, I don't know you. what you're looking at, lady, but it's a view of St. Paul and it's gorgeous. <laughs> I think the lesson yeah. is sometimes no matter how good a job you do, you can't please everybody. So just make sure that you're doing the best job you can and you have a complete commitment to that and the rest doesn't matter. I love it. And peeps have fun. Awesome. So Gavin, you've been absolutely fantastic. I appreciate your time immensely. Any last words for our peeps? Well, how many words do I have? <laughs> as many um, as you like, love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have quite a few. Look, the reality is there's a lot of businesses out there. There's a lot of ideas that somebody can have. You know, business today to get started is so much easier than it was 20 or 30 years ago. You go onto a website, you buy a company, it almost gives you the bank account with the company. You get somebody to do the website for $500 just to get started. It doesn't mean it has all the payment things and everything, but you know, you've got an entity within 72 hours. Now, are you going to go down the path where you waste your time and energy on an idea that you actually are not passionate about. Because a lot of people out there have ideas and they're good ideas, but they're not passionate about it, but they do it anyway. And what happens is at some point you derail your commitment to the business is derailed either through self-sabotage because you're losing interest because you don't have a passion for it or for external factors which are way outside of your control but happen because you're not living in your purpose. And, you know, to live in your purpose also means to be living out your passion because that's a sense of fulfillment that we all get. So I get a sense of fulfillment from being of service to others and making a huge impact in their world and in our world and the environment. So that's what I'm now doing. And, you know, I had a few coaches ask me in between my transition between real estate and to what I'm doing now, what's your passion? And go tennis, love tennis, love, uh, love traveling, you know, like, but, these are things that you really like, like, like what is your passion? What's something that you would be willing to fall on your sword for, you know, something so strong that nothing is going to stop your commitment. That's my advice is to follow your passion no matter what. And don't worry what other people think. Uh, just basically make sure that you're doing it with passion. I love it. So peeps, go and check out Gavin's site, go and connect with him, get set up, figure out what you got to figure out in order to get that kind of passion and commitment in your life because, you know, <laughs> what's the point in living if you're not going to do it that way? You know, you got one life to live, make it epic. Awesome. Thank you again, Gavin, for your time. I appreciate it immensely. Thank you so much. Awesome peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe for, to the show and share it with your friends that you think might like it. And if you're looking to scale and automate your business, reach out to me at michelle at awarenessstrategies.com or connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you. 
Thank you for listening to our show. I'm all about being a resource center for entrepreneurs to give them the information and the support that they need to make it in business. As such, the notes for this show can be found at our website at awarenessstrategies.com slash blog. Be sure to subscribe, give us a rating, I like five stars personally, and share with your friends.